Whoa! I'm sure the neighbors loved that. That's a lot of pressure sitting right in front of there. So what about those effects? Well, what was I using for effects? Okay. I had two delays on. I, 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 I always use one, at least one delay, real tight. Okay, like that delay there is always set. Sometimes I turn this one on. It just has a tail, longer tail on the end. All right, so that, that was what, what was on for delay. Uh, and then, of course, the Gain Master was bringing that clean sound to here, you know. fuzzes I like. Um, I had kicked this one in. These fuzzes have um, select AC 128s that 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 I selected out of a lot. It's nice to have a lot. Like if you have you know like 500 of them, I'm sure you're going to find some that sound good. <laughs> but they don't all sound good. So pedals are you know or good fuzz pedals are hard to build because of that reason. But that's what I was using for effects there. I see you get a lot of questions from guitarists regarding how to properly plug the amp in. Yeah. And it really, it's, it's amazing to me that through all the years that, that, that people never really, most people figure it out, but a lot of people don't, you know. And everyone asks me about Variacs and why I use a Variac. Um, this, this, this might get a little technical, but it's time to learn it. I mean, if you play guitar, especially somewhere other than your house, even in your house it's important, but you just go somewhere and you take an amp and you plug it into the wall and you just assume that everything's okay in that wall voltage. Well, it's not that way, especially if you use vintage old amps, then you really need to pay attention to this. Um, first off, grounds. Okay, this, you know, there's so much to, to, to learn about ground loops and how they work. This is very simple. Anything that this cord goes through on the way to that, okay, can't be grounded. All right, that that's it. It just can't be grounded. You can only have the ground at the amp. Now, if you use two amps, you have to float one of the amps. Okay, but I don't suggest using. Uh, you know, I didn't put one out, but the you know, or here it is, right here, a little gray cheater or orange, whatever color you get. Don't use that on the amp. Use it on anything else, but on an amp, use something called a Hum X. Okay, it's a little bigger than this. A little more expensive. They're sixty dollars as opposed to a dollar. Okay, but that 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 hum X on one of the two amps will kill any ground loops in the amps. Okay, and then you can just use these cheaters on any effect you have that has a ground. Sometimes, according to the law, they have to put a grounded cord there. But like, especially me with my Gain Master. But there's no need for it. I mean, you're not going to get electrocuted from a, a, a guitar effect like that as long as you're grounded back there. So that's. That's how to eliminate ground loops. So, do you just plug into the wall? No. You, 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 at the very least, you need a surge suppressor. Okay, um, something that that will will eat up a surge from the wall. Now, like you, what you use for your computer? Yeah, like you use for your computer or any of that kind of stuff. And when when you have a um, uh, my stuff is all modern, so it's designed to run on 120 volts. But in the old days, if you remember, if you're of any age, it was called 110. Okay, that's because it was only 110 volts in the wall. All right, but since the late 70s, early 80s, they started rebuilding the grids and started raising the voltage a little more and a little more. 
now you can see, you can easily see, you know, 124 would be, you know, the norm. You could see 130 volts out of the wall, depending on what time of day and where you live. Say you live in in a residential area near near where there's a lot of stores and stuff. Okay, between five o'clock and eight o'clock in the evening, the big power companies, all these stores are closing down. All this usage for electricity, so they're trying to shut the grids down. And, and lessen the load. And if you put a meter in your wall at those times of day, you can see some really high voltages because as hard as those guys can work, it takes time to knock down these grids. Okay, Early in the morning you have the same problems. By the middle of the day you should see the same thing out of your wall all the time usually. But now you go to a, a, a gig, you go to the club, you don't know what's there. I mean people just go and they plug in. It's just crazy. Um, so everybody asks, why do, why do I always use a variac? Well, I suggest using a variac for two reasons. One, it decouples the wall voltage, okay? And number two, you can set your voltage for whatever you need. Um, if you have an old amp, you want 110, 115, depending on how that primary is wound. Because if you know how transformers work, they transform voltages, okay? So whatever that winding input, there's a mathematical formula for the winding, the output voltages. So you have big windings for your plate voltages and all this other stuff that you're going to convert to DC. But you have this little winding called your filament winding, and that's what lights the tubes, and that's supposed to be 6.3 volts AC. Now, if, if you plug a 110 amp that has a transformer figured from 110 on the primary side into the wall, and there's 126 volts in the wall, you're going to have like 8 volts or something on those tubes. Those tubes aren't going to last long. So, uh, so it's very important with old amps. My amps are, are wired for 120. So even my amps, if you got 126 or something coming out of the wall, you really need to check that. Now there's expensive devices you can buy that have, you know, 10, 12 isolated outlets and, and control the voltage wherever you go and keep it at that. If you can afford that, buy that. Furman makes them. They're, they're pretty. They're pretty good. If you can't afford that, just get a Variac and, and with a good meter on it. And when you get to the club, you know, look at what the voltage is. If you need to lower the Variac, lower it a little bit. If you need to higher it, raise it, raise it. Um, it's, it's just a matter of getting whatever voltage you want for all your stuff. If you use an old amp and modern stuff here, you're going to need two Variacs. You're going to need one to keep that amp down and one to keep this stuff where it is. Um, but at the very least, if you don't want to involve yourself with all that, get a surge suppressor because surge suppressors are very important because what happens is you get, you get fast, large surges out of the wall. And the way tube amps work is um, these surges, when they run through the output transformer, can generate um, very, very high voltages for a moment and, you know, can cause arcing problems in the amp and all kinds of problems. Um, and and so, so that's a ba basic rundown on how to, how to plug your, your stuff in. At the very least, a surge suppressor. And I gave you a little rundown on ground loops, too, to get you started. In a previous video, um, you talked about single-ended amps and how no one ever really figured out how to make a high-powered single-ended amp. And then before they even had guitar amps, they invented a push-pull circuit. Right, and that's when they, the industry completely stopped messing with single-ended amps. So, um, what, what... How did you figure it out? Well... How to make a high-powered one? I'll give you an example. What we were just talking about, about surges from the wall, okay, that's one of the biggest reasons why high-powered single-ended amps never happened, okay? Because what happens in a single-ended amp is that output transformer, unlike a push-pull amp, it's only doing one thing, okay? It's not working in two phases. It's, uh, it's the simplest way to explain it to you. So, so it's, it's, it's very linear in this conversation. What, what happens is, is when you have a, a surge come out of that wall, and through the B plus of that amp, it can run into that output transformer and develop a massive voltage spike. And guess where that goes? That goes to your tube socket. Okay. Does that burn up the tubes? It burns up the tube and the tube socket. And the reason why and the socket. Yeah. The reason why is, you know, there were pretty brilliant people that invented these things, but they weren't completely brilliant. Okay. One big mistake they made on an eight pin socket is. Um, pin, there's, there's, the, the, the way this works is 
the way they designed the tube, the pins are where they are, okay? So when you plug them in, you know, it's what it is. So you have pin, I can't see in this light, but you have pin one and eight right here, okay? And then you have pin two right beside that. And then you have pin three right beside pin two. Okay, pin two is half of that filament voltage we talked about earlier. Okay, it's one side of that AC voltage. It's a high current winding and it's grounded. It's a grounded circuit. Okay, pin three is the plate. It's the output side of the of the it's the the the, the output side of the uh, of the input of the output transformer. So when you generate a surge into one side of that output transformer, this output side that goes to the tube socket, okay, that voltage winds up there, like a massive amount of voltage. That the, the tube wouldn't know what to do with that. The circuit doesn't know what to do with that. And it, it won't do anything, okay? It's like, it's like lightning. If lightning has no place to go, if you go and you stick your finger in the wall, one part of the wall plug, nothing's going to happen. I don't care how much voltage is there. It's, nothing's going to happen unless you give that voltage a place to go. Okay, you touch ground with your other hand or your shoes don't insulate you from the ground. Then that voltage gets called and goes through you. Okay, well, this massive surge hits pin three. Okay, pin two is ground potential. That voltage sees that and jumps across that pin and blows this tube socket up, blows the tube up, and you can't make high-powered single-ended amps because single-ended transformers, when you start using them, in a, in a real heavy way, running a lot of tubes uh, with a lot of voltage, this is a big, big problem. Okay, so you know I spent years and years and years trying to develop a way to get a high-powered single-ended amp without this problem. Now a lot of you guys have seen a tube, old tubes that have a wire that comes to the top of the tube. There's an actual terminal on the top, and a wire comes out of the amp. This is, these aren't guitar amps now. And I'm talking earlier than guitar amps with all this stuff. This wasn't invented for a guitar amp, okay? So what, what that wire is, is they knew they made this mistake, okay? So instead of changing the entire industry and changing this socket, which everybody was using, they started making tubes that had that pin three not there. It was up here, okay? So that couldn't happen because what we had was single-ended amps, all right? And you still couldn't get much power out of them anyway. But that was, that was the biggest stopping point, okay? And then the tubes people like for guitar are not those tubes that have that thing on the top. Those tubes sound like crap if you try to use them in a guitar circuit. So now you're back to this, and you're back to this blowing up, okay? So, you know, th this, is, this is a definite uh, uh, stopping point on most people from building high-power single-ended amps. So you figured out how to do it even though the two pins are next to each other without a... I did, and there were other people that I knew that were working on it too. And Who else? Well, my friend Ken was working on a different theory, okay, a different way to create a higher power single ended amp. We traded a lot of notes then. He went one way... About how to overcome those two pins next to each that other. That was the biggest problem. Okay. As far as making an amp sound good, if you know what you're doing and, and, and you're a designer, these things are all, those aren't stopping points. This is a stopping point because the materials you're using are flawed to the point of where they won't function. Okay, So these are high current, single-ended, class A amps. You can generate huge surges. Now, okay, so you plug them in really good uh, and you don't ever sell an amp to someone that doesn't understand that. It's still going to happen. Okay if you don't figure out how to, how to stop the problem. And at one point, I had actual, I had spark plugs in my amps, my early <laughs> amps, yeah, to eat that surge. But it didn't, it, it worked out okay for a little while. It was interesting, but you can always hear it in the studio going, K -k -k, you know, when, when, that would, when that would occur. And to set the gap was just... You have to go tune up your amp? Yeah, if you set the gap too close, you know, you'd blow the fuse. You, it, it was just, it was really, it was really tricky. And it wasn't the answer. Now... Ken was looking for it all in the transformer, in the output transformer. I started looking for it in a different place, but I went to see him once, and he showed me his latest incarnation of his single-ended amp. 
And I'm not kidding you, the output transformer was this tall. <laughs> and he said he finally got a completely surge free amp, but it didn't sound very good. He didn't like it either. And the know. transformer weighed 40 pounds? Yeah, and it was just silly because it was all in the gap and how the gap in the transformer to keep this surge from developing because, because his ideas on how to get the tone out of the amp wouldn't take him where, where I went because my amps have always sounded different than his for some fundamental reasons, you know, and, uh, and, and he was looking for some of the goodness in single-ended, but he wanted to keep some of the other things that he did so well that his other amps are famous for, and going in, in my direction would, would ruin that sound, but, but I don't go after that sound. You know, uh, you know. What sound? You know, it's hard to put these things into words, you know, but, you know, Leslie West, you know, great, that's wonderful and all that, but... I don't want it, you know, I want something different. Um, there's certain things that each person is more knocked out by in life, you know, you know that, that sound was something that when Ken heard it, it was like, you know. The Leslie West sound. Yeah, yeah. Well, what he was looking for, of course, Ken made stuff that was even better than what he ever had, you know. But anyway, long story short of it, he went that route, and he, when he finally got the amp to function, it didn't sound good. So that's why he abandoned. So his, the train wreck amps are push pull amps. They're push pull amps. That's why he abandoned his quest for single ended. Um, these are things that you know aren't important to people that are all into just the image of having a train wreck that don't know Ken and don't you know. I'm, I'm talking to people that maybe knew him. You know, giving some insight into uh, you know m things that aren't aren't public knowledge. You know. So is he continuing to like for experiment instance, with single-ended while he was building his? No, no. What, what, once that, once he finally got his amp surge-free, um, and it didn't sound good, and 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 we both knew it. There was no way to make that transformer sound good because of certain things. So so, you know, he knew it was the time to stop that completely. Stop that. But you know, I see things on there like people say he built a hundred amps. That's like common knowledge and stuff. Well. Guess what? You know, all these things you hear are are, are, are not true. Um, but anyway, these, so these, there's a little piece of information there about about something else he was doing other than, and I can tell you a lot of things he was doing, but just something other than the Express, the Liverpool, and the Rocket. You know. Um, well, maybe that should be a different video because it worked 20 minutes now. Right, and I'm just telling you, you know, the, the so, you know a, a different thing he was doing. But okay, so the direction I went in. Surprise, 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 I'm not going to tell you, because if I tell you, you you'll know how to build this. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's in the output transformers to a certain degree, but only for tone. I don't look to remove the surge from the output transformer, and there's no spark plugs in the amps, okay? And it's a little more expensive to build them when you go this route, because because you have to beef up other other things and and so on and so forth. So, you know, as far as, you know, technicalities of, as to why I'm just telling you why you don't see high-powered single-ended amps in the industry and I don't mean the guitar industry because they abandoned it long ago but I'm talking just tube industry you know when tubes were used for, for everything from broadcast to whatever the only place single-ended amps stayed in production was in high-end tube audio with, with 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 very low power single 300b tubes and like so on and so forth. home audio yeah, like those two top units are, are single-ended like that. But, but what happens is there is, is that you can use very high-efficient speakers to make that wattage very powerful, that small wattage. And you can't do that in a guitar amp. There's, there's, you know, the, the, the speaker would be too big to carry. It would have a horn, giant horn in it and, 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 and huge drivers. And, and I mean, that's how you make speakers efficient enough to make four watts sound like, you know, 50 watts. So that, that was out in the guitar. Giant industry. cones. Right. So you have your Champ and your Princeton and then see you later. I mean, there's really nothing else in the industry. And, and those amps, you can't judge single-ended from those amps because they're built like junk. You know, they're just, uh, they were just cheap, you know, amps to sell to kids, really, pretty much. But anyway, that's a little rundown on, uh, on um, a bunch of things. Plugging an amp in properly. Um, most of you guys know this, but it surprises me how many people don't, you know, so. That's They're that that's sensitive. Over.
Well, they work on a, vo a certain voltage, and if that voltage isn't represented with what's coming out, out of the wall, it's your job to fix that. I mean, I've been to some parts of the country and stuck the meter in the wall and went, what, 134 volts? You know? And in the 80s, in the early 80s, I was working on amps feverishly because everyone was blowing their amps up. These kids were going to clubs playing. We were all in our 20s. And they, they had just started to change these voltages. You know, when I was younger than that, there was 110 in the wall. Now all of a sudden, there's 120 volts in the wall. And your toaster and your hair dryer and all your things are designed to work on 110. Everything was blowing up. TVs were, were, be, were destroying themselves. You know, they, no one told anybody. No, no one, you know, it took me a while to figure this out. Why am I fixing so much stuff here? You know, because of voltage surges, not just single ended amps, anything is, is really, really detrimental. So how much does a Variat cost? They're not expensive. Just get a good one though. Don't get those Chinese ones. They don't, they don't work very well. Get, get an old American one. They rebuild them. You can get them on eBay. There um, aren't any brand new ones that are good? I wouldn't. They're all from China, you know, and, 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 you know, you only get, you only need to buy it once. So, so what, if you spend an extra 40 or 50 bucks on it, just get a good one, get an old Staco or something, you know, but very, very are good, good for two reasons. Like I said, they isolate the walls cause it's a transformer. So the voltage coming out of the wall goes through wire and a magnetic field to come out the other end. So any junk that was in there gets interrupted coming out the other end. And obviously, you can raise or lower your voltage a little bit or a lot. You know, I mean, if you're going to Europe, you're going to need to change it a lot. But anyway, that's so obviously Ken was using a Variac too, and he was making that kind of circuitry. Yeah, every every really smart guitar player, I mean that that that's been around for a while, look behind the ramp. There's there's a Variac back there. People figure that out. You know, I know this might be shocking to some people. Oh God, I got to go buy another thing and. When they first meet me and they find out about that, you know, and then, you know, years later, they're like, second nature you, you, to have good 